Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to raise this complex number to the seventh power. To do that, we'll start by writing it in what's called trigonometric or polar form. So a number is in trigonometric or polar form if it has the form r parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. Here r is called the modulus and theta is called the argument. So the way I like to do it is I just set this equal to the complex number, so negative 1 plus i. Then there's a formula for r. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. In this problem, x is negative 1, so it'll be negative 1 squared. And the y is a 1. There's a 1 in front of the uh, i. That's our y, so plus 1 squared. So every, every complex number can be written as x plus yi. So using matching, you see x is negative 1 and y is 1. This is equal to 1 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 2. Then what I like to do is just plug it back in. So we have negative 1 plus i is equal to the square root of 2, parentheses, cosine theta, plus i sine theta. So we have found the modulus r. We just have to find uh, the argument. So the way I like to do it is I like to do it from like a constructive approach. So like I distribute the square root of 2. Some people use like the tangent function and stuff like that. I, I like to do it from scratch. It's just It just seems more natural than memorizing a formula. And I'll write this down over here. Okay, good stuff. So now we use the fact, uh, what, what does it mean for two complex numbers to be equal? Well, two complex numbers are equal when the real parts are equal. So this is called the real part. So negative 1 is equal to the square root of 2 times cosine theta. And the imaginary parts are equal. So there's a 1 here. So 1 is equal to square root of 2 sine theta. Then we can solve for each of our trig functions. So here we'll get cosine theta. So if you divide by um, the square root of 2, you get negative 1 over the square root of 2. Same thing here, divide by, you'll just get uh, 1 over the square root of 2. So where are we on the unit circle where this occurs? Uh, we're going to be, well, where's the complex number? In the same, same, same place, it's going to be up here somewhere because uh, we're at negative 1 plus i, which is the same thing as negative 1 comma 1, if you think of it as an ordered pair. Um, also, you can look at it like this. On the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate and sine is the y-coordinate. So cosine is negative and sine is positive, so you must be here. I know that the sine of pi over 4 is equal to this. So we're looking for an angle that has a reference angle of pi over 4 that is in this quadrant. So we're looking for this angle here. This is our theta. We know this is pi, which is the same thing as 4 pi over 4. So the angle that has a reference angle of pi over 4 that is in quadrant 2, so if this is pi over 4, what's left? Well, 4 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. So that's going to be our angle. Again, when you see this, you say, hey, what's an angle that gives me this? Well, the sine of pi over 4 is this, square root of 2 over 2. This has been rationalized. This is the same thing as this, by the way. You can multiply this by this, and you'll get this. So you memorize this one, and you say, OK, I'm looking for an angle in quadrant 2 that has a reference angle of pi over 4. So you draw your picture. You say, this is 4 pi over 4. Here's my reference angle. If you subtract them, you get this blue angle here, which is 3 pi over 4. All right, so now let's go ahead and write our complex number down. So negative 1 plus i is equal to the square root of 2, parentheses. And we said our angle was 3 pi over 4. So this is the cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. And this is being raised, all of this is, oh, not yet, <laughs> but that's, that's our, 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 um, our complex number. Now it's being raised to the seventh power, so let's do that. So I'm going to put, use a different color here, let's go with the yellow. I'm going to raise this to the seventh power, so yes, it's being raised to the um, 
seventh power, like this. Okay, raising it to the seventh power. And let's see what happens here. So this is equal to, so using something called the Morse theorem, you raise this to the seventh power. And then you multiply each of these angles by seven. This is called the Morse theorem. This is the trick. So cosine of seven times three pi over four plus I sine seven times three pi over four. Okay, so this is equal to the square root of two to the seventh. Let me just, let me just rewrite that a little bit nicer. So the square root of two to the seventh, parentheses, cosine of, so we're looking at uh, a really big number here, 21 pi over four, plus and then I sine of 21 pi over four. Okay, so now we need to work out these this 21 pi over four. So I'm thinking, let's draw a little picture and see if we can figure it out. So here's the unit circle. So this is zero, but it's also two pi. So as a number over four, that would be uh, eight pi over four. We're still pretty far from 21 pi, right? Okay, so it's also four pi. So as a number over four, that would be 16 pi over four. Still not quite there. It's also um, six pi. So as a number over four, right, six pi would be 24 pi over four. Okay, so we've gone too far. So we can think of this angle here, right here, as 24 pi over four. We want 21 pi over four. So if you subtract pi over four, that's gonna put us here. It's gonna be 23 pi over four. Subtract it again, that'll put you here. That's 22 pi over four. Subtract it again, that'll put you here. That's 21 pi over four. So now you're in quadrant three. So um, everything, they're both negative, right? The X and the Y. And the reference angle here is pi over four. So on the unit circle, this ordered pair is gonna be negative root two over two, negative root two over two. So the cosine of both of these guys, cosine of 21 pi over four, sine of 21 pi over four, um, in both cases is gonna be this. This will be the square, square root of two to the seventh, parentheses, negative root two, over two minus i root two over two. When you distribute here, what happens is you get, you multiply the exponents, you add them rather. So there's a one here. So you get negative square root of two to the eighth over two minus i square root of two to the eighth over two. Because this times this means you add the numbers, okay? So you do seven plus one, which is eight. So how do you deal with this, square root of two to the eighth? Well, um, a couple ways. Let's let's do it on the side over here. Let's see. So you have the square root of two to the uh, eighth power. Easy way to do it is think of it as two to the one half to the eighth power. Eight times one half is four. So you get two to the fourth, which is 16. So this is equal to negative 16 over two minus i times 16 over two. So you get negative eight minus eight i. And that would be the final answer. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.